I'm Barbara Gon Mueller, and welcome to peacepodcast.org. Our goal is to bring peace to our planet, especially now when we have COVID-19 running rapid and people running away from it and trying to save their lives and their families and their income. And, oh, I don't even want to go into all the problems that people share with me, but I always give them hope. I always give them hope that it's just around the corner with your attitude and the way that you keep yourself whole and happy. Maybe that will help change the situation you're in. And so today we're going to interview, not interview, but have a conversation with Lisa Broderick. Now, why am I doing that? Because Lisa has seven simple steps for the police reform. Now, you know, we have had more police stories in the news than I can count, but I'm just gonna start by telling you what a wonderful friend she is. She is the executive director of Police to Peace, a former high-tech executive with decades of experience in communication and how it impacts society and changes behavior. I'm stopping there for a minute. Communication, that's what we're gonna talk about today. From her start at Apple Computer in its early years, she went on to hold one of the first e-commerce companies on the internet. And I said head, I should have said, because she was in charge and has served as CEO of numerous high-tech top companies. She has frequently found herself at the forefront of, listen to this, disrupt disruptive technologies to societal problems through the use of language and radical thinking. How important language is today. Today, Lisa serves as executive director of police too with the number there, peace, which she devotes her time to reshaping policing, policing in America. I say those words because I love Lisa. Lisa has a dream, and you're going to hear about that at the end. And I'm going to start with a question. Lisa, first, let me welcome you. Barbara, thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure. It's my pleasure to have you. And the reforms that you want and the languages that you're going to teach people are going to be really important. So I'm going to start with seven simple steps to police reform. Is that possible? And what are they? It is possible. Well, first of all, let's start off with what I, a vision that I have for policing in this country. And I'll say that I'm not someone who has a big background in policing. But I had an idea and I followed a dream. And my idea and dream was this, that we could unite police and the communities they serve around programs that uplift and heal them both. Because if we can do that, and we can get to a place of coexistence where the police as part of civil society are a necessary function, a necessary resource for us when things go bad. And where people feel like they're, they, they are, they're enjoying uh, the officers who are in their communities. They are uplifted by what the officers do when they are in and around their communities. And I know from my work with so many officers, they want, to, they want community members to feel that way. They want to be part of the community. And in many communities, they are. But we've had a very, very tough time recently. So at this point, the country is overflowing with resentment and difficulty related to the police. And I'm just hoping that the work we do at Police to Peace can do something to change that. Well, you said there were seven simple steps. And is that something that people can automatically find on your website? Or that is something that you would like to have people contact you so that you can help their police departments use these seven simple steps to police reform? Yes. So in our work with communities in the last many years, we came upon uh, an idea, particularly after the summer, which was so difficult. And clearly, you know, the the referendum and the the reconciliation we need to do as a country on race and and, uh, including all of our citizens in how society moves forward is front and center. And it's on top of mind. And the police are very involved in that. And what I wanted to do was to provide a simple prescription where people could put together something for their community. My dream is that it's not just a couple of departments that we fix or maybe the big cities, and people may not know this, there are 18,000 police departments in this country and 800,000 officers. What we really need to do is provide something for everyone, for little communities and big cities. So here are seven simple steps that any community of any size can do. And I know they work because communities are doing them. We've had these out for a couple of months. So number one, uh, departments really need to know what the community thinks of them. 
For example, a department in the South right now reached out to us and they're performing a self-review. A self-review is a series of academic surveys that we provide to the community in partnership with our research partner, uh, New York University Beta Gov, where the citizens are surveyed about how they feel about their officers and their community in the department. The officers are surveyed about how they feel about the community members, and the officers are asked how they feel about themselves in their department. It's an extremely important process to know as a baseline where the community is in its feelings, because this is all about feelings, and where the officers are. So with that self-review, and by the way, the self-review is free on our website. We work with communities all over the country. We can perform it or the department can perform it themselves. But once that is underway, you want to do one simple thing. You want to form a six-month working task force. Now, this six-month working task force needs to include the stakeholders in your community. It needs to include the mayor's office, the city council, someone from the police or sheriff. And by the way, there are marshals and constables as well. Not everybody has a police or a sheriff. Right? You want to include advocacy groups. You want to include the faith community. You want to include aspects of the community who all want to say in how the community is being policed. So you form that task force and hopefully you have three people on it. Three of, from the group uh, that I just mentioned of the stakeholders who would be interested in changing policing. And then together you review the police line item budget because every city, whether it's a sheriff or a constable or a mayor has a budget in which it provides for policing. Well, what is that money being spent on? And right now, communities are very interested in what that money is being spent on because it's been highlighted, right? Policing, police seems to be a little, uh, a little too much about defending property and not a lot about helping people in need. Well, what is the money being spent on? Spent on? Have that group review the police line item budget. That's step three. Number four, and which is very important, and that is, We've had a lot of discussion about policies, about the way policing is done. Learn which of these important policies are in place in your police services, we'll call them, which could be police or sheriff or constable or marshal. One, is there a policy about de-escalation? Two, is there a policy to limit use of force? Does it ban chokeholds? Do police warn people before shooting? Do they restrict shooting at moving vehicles? Do they exhaust all other means before shooting? Do they have a duty to intervene? Is there a comprehensive after action reporting that can be looked at? And do they affirm the sanctity of human life? These are things you want to as a group, as a task force, explore together. And if the police or sheriff or police services does not have these policies, then ask why. There may be good reasons and they may not have thought of them or they may just really need to be part of the policies of the department. And then together with that information, develop a custom list of actionable steps for your community. Not every community faces the same challenge. Some communities have homelessness, some communities have student populations, some communities have mental health challenges. Define a list that suits your community. And then share the findings with your police services, meaning your police chief or sheriff, and of course the people on the task force your findings and your report about what to do. And this is about at the end of six months because it'll take that long. And then release your recommendations publicly to the community, include everyone. And of course, the next step is enacting your recommendations. But those are the seven steps that any community can take. Well, it sounds like you're building a community that communicates. If you do that on one topic like the police, just think of all the other ways that they can communicate about issues that they're facing in their community. It sounds like you're bringing the community together on a simple to a topic that everybody cares about. That's right. And, and our name is actually important to this discussion. I named the organization Police to Peace because I saw that introducing a simple word, peace, into communities related to policing could be an important shift. And in fact, the, when you go back to fundamentals, officers in this country are basically peace officers. That's how they're referred to in local and state penal codes. Mm -hmm. So around the country, they are not referred to police officers themselves in the penal code. They're, they may be referred to as peace officers instead very widely. And so peace officer is the one unifying notion that all police services officers are unified by. If we could introduce that notion and build on that as communication in the community, it changes people. It changes people when the community sees that the officer's uniforms say peace officer on them. 
it changes the department when the chief says, well, what is a good peace officer? And what is a good peace officer department? And what is a good peace officer lieutenant? When they start to ask these questions, how do you hire peace officers? How do you promote and reward peace officers? When that is fundamental to the community, everything shifts towards peace, which is our hope. Well, it sounds like you're building a bridge toward peace, using the police to build that bridge and giving them the tools they need and the community the tools they need to get along with the police. Um, if you were to think about our country, right now we're in lots of um, disruption and disagreements. Um, what's your hope for our country today? Our hope, my hope for our country is that we could become a country that is in a different place from today. And that different place is to change the way police services see themselves. And by the way, you might notice that I'm not using the word law enforcement. Law enforcement is a term that doesn't really appear in penal codes, peace officer does, ironically. But if we refer to officers as law enforcement, then that's what they'll do is enforce the law. How about referring to them as police services or peace officers? If we can change the way officers view themselves, we can change the behaviors of officers towards the community, and we can change how the community receives and treats officers to one of respect. And our hope is that it results in a more fair, just, and equitable society for everyone. That's our dream, that everybody will have a fair treatment and that the police become peace officers. Um, when I was living in Costa Rica, we had, they were not called police, they were called peace officers. And I loved that. And nobody had guns and they had, you know, they were with the people, they became part of the community. Well, they were part of the community. They were the sons and daughters of the people who founded the communities. And I look at That's some right. of the results of your work and I see, peace officer on the side of the police cars. And I think that's a symbol for people to remind themselves that the police are peaceful, they're peace producers. And I would love to go back to that concept. Is that gonna happen, Lisa? Well, we're looking for agencies that are forward thinking that want that. Historically, departments have shied away from change. It's difficult. They have people's lives are at stake and big changes can mean can mean re repercussions. Obviously, introducing the word peace into your community is probably the least threatening and the most non-threatening thing you could do. So we have hope around that. But if we're looking for departments who want to think of themselves as peaceful, and with those, we want departments who want to aspire to a place, and I'll just say it, where they never have to shoot anyone ever again. That would be our aspiration. We get to a society that, is, that we peacefully coexist, now, will there be police services where there is mental illness and criminal behavior and violence and all kinds of things? Of course, which is why we so love the police when they respond that way. And to have them think of themselves as defending the defenseless, coming to the aid of those in need, standing for us and by us, then we truly will have a different society. And I believe we can get there. Isn't that beautiful? Defending the defenseless working with the voiceless, being there for moms and children. And in the olden days, I remember the police were my friends. Well, of course, my dad was a fireman. So, you know, the police were always at our house. I didn't view them as anything <sighs> except family. They were my family. And now not everybody has that opportunity to become friends. And I think it happens when you pay attention and you do what you said to start. Have that survey. Find out what people are thinking. You know, I was trained by Edward Bernays in the engineering of consent. And the first thing you have to do is research before you begin any project. Find out where people are. What kind of problems are they experiencing? I remember doing um, a family reunion in Santa Barbara where one of the children's parents were killed by the police. And I remember the grandchildren saying, I'm afraid to walk to school. And I felt, oh, well, you know, if you're afraid to walk to school, we need to do some police to peace reform. So we invited the mayor and she's still considering it. She hasn't forgotten it to talk about how we can bring the police back to being the friends for the children who are walking to school. There's so many dreams that I have. Um, Lisa, it's just a pleasure. You're listening to Lisa Broderick and she is an amazing woman who has a dream. And if we, we, if we went to the beginning, when she was sitting on the beach and she saw the police car driving by, what happened? I'm just gonna ask you that and then I'm gonna 
ask one more question after that. How did you get this idea, Lisa? Well, I do get asked that a lot because I don't have a background in policing. And so I was living in the South and I was working. I'm a business consultant before Police to Peace. And I was visiting a beach, a beach I very much loved, and a police vehicle came onto the sand. And in a moment that I can only call a momentary vision, I did see the words peace officer on the vehicle. And I thought to myself, what, did I really just see that? What was that? But I knew enough to ask a question, and that is, if not me, who? If not now, when? And so I thought about that idea, and I thought if we really could do just that one simple thing as a start to put peace officer on vehicles around the country. And by the way, I called a friend of mine who's an attorney who said, well, he works in civil rights. He said, well, that's what they're, all, they're called. I don't know why they all don't do that. I knew that my future was solidified and that I would be bringing peace to the world, hopefully, through Police to Peace. Well, I think you have a passion to bring this to our communities and to our country. And I wish you the very best. And I'm there to help you. I know that you can do it. You know, um, the power that we have inside that may be locked in there until something like the police car runs by you on the beach and you see it and you get that vision. Don't ignore your impulses. If you feel something needs to be done, take the action like Lisa is. Lisa, if we want to find out more about Police to Peace, where would we go? We, are, of course, are on the internet. We are at police, the number two, peace.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on Pinterest, of course all of uplifting pictures of, of people working together in their communities in, in ways that heal them, because that's really what it's all about. When you bring peace to a community, people heal. I love those words, police to peace, and then healing the communities. And we need a lot of that right now. So I want to thank you for being on today. And I want to thank you for your dream. And I want to thank you for your vision. And I want to thank you for your work, because I know this gives you power. It gives you the reason to get up in the morning. It gives you um, the opportunity to work with communities that may not be in harmony right now. So that must be very rewarding for you. It is. To see people come back to a place of yes, come back to a place of acceptance and mutual respect. What does peace look like in a community? It means getting along. It means respecting one another, treating one, one another with respect officers and citizens alike. And when we get to that, we truly thrive as a society. I know we can get back there. Well, you've just heard a vision that I think is going to become reality. My late husband, Robert Mueller, and I are convinced that dreams are what bring the world to the peace that it needs. And I also want to have a shout out to the United Nations. They're celebrating their 75th anniversary. And I just am so grateful for that global voice. Right now we're listening to Lisa Broderick and she has been talking about police to peace.org. And I hope you will join us again. Share this video with your friends. Talk about what it would take to know what's going on in your community and to bring the peace police to the peace officers that we deserve. Thanks so much for being on Lisa. Barbara, thanks so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. And I say, remember, police to peace, and it is possible to have peace officers in all of our communities. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. You're welcome.